How many knows Jesus is still a miracle worker? Amen. How many here has he worked a miracle in your life one time or another? Mm, I am a miracle since Jesus rescued me. I am a miracle since he came into my life. For I was bound in a world of sin until Jesus came within. And I'm a miracle. And it's all because of him. Yes, I am a miracle since Jesus rest. You me, I am a miracle since he came into my life. For I was found in a world of sin until Jesus came within. And now I'm a miracle all because of him. Oh, you know Jesus is a miracle to me oh from this world he created to the cross of calvary oh he rose up on that third day now you and i we can be saved i'm telling you church that is a miracle to me how many believe that tonight i am a miracle since Jesus rescued me. I am a miracle since he came into my life. For I was found in a world of sin. Oh, but you know Jesus came within. And I'm a miracle. And it's all because of him. Said I was found in a world God, Jesus came within. Now I'm a miracle, and it's all because of Him. Oh, hallelujah. I don't know about you, but can you say that you're a miracle? I know I'm a miracle. Hallelujah. Why? Because I know where He brought me from and where I could have been. I know what he's already done for me, but not only what he's already done for me, I know what he's going to do for me. I don't, and I'm, gonna, I'm not expecting him to do it next year. Hallelujah. God told me a few days ago, and I've been telling our people in the church, God promised some of you some things in 1992. 1992 is not over with yet. We still got a few more days in that that God's promised. He's going to bring to pass. That the God's promise, his hand is not short. His ear is not deaf. And he ain't gone bankrupt. He ain't out of supplies. But he's still got a heaven full. Somebody give Jesus a hand clap. Oh, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Wow, hallelujah, wow. Brother and sister. McClintock is getting their gear together. I want all the ministers to stand. Local ministers, out-of-town ministers, I want everybody to stand. Even if you stood last night, I want you to, if you're not ashamed of the gospel, ministers and their wives stand. Hallelujah. When I say not ashamed, man, they jumped up. Hallelujah. You must be Holy Ghost people. Tell us your name and where you're from. Tony Counts, York, Pennsylvania. Naomi Counts, York, Pennsylvania. Melba Hart, Detroit, Michigan. Ralph Hart from Detroit. Tommy Counts, York, Pennsylvania. Ellen Counts, York, Pennsylvania. Charles Rhodes, Tennessee. Brother and Sister Hollis from Dallas, Texas. Charles Stoker from Rossville, Georgia. Arlie Horn from Holland, Michigan. Marty Anderson, Holland, Michigan. Richard Myers from Auburn Hills. Joan Myers, Auburn Hills, Michigan. Philip Whitley, Atlanta, Georgia. Bill and Sally Bailey. Where are you from? Bradenton, Florida. John Copshina, West Virginia. Linda Copshina, West Virginia. Alma Bratcher, Lake Wales, Florida. Jesse Bratcher, Lake Wales, Florida. Greg Huffer, Cheyenne, Wyoming. Wyoming, well, a long way. Yvonne Killingsworth, Pensacola, Florida. Fred Pine, Springfield, Missouri. Barbara Pine, Springfield, Missouri. Hallelujah. 
got them from the north, from the south, and somebody told me that Brother Doyle was here somewhere or coming in. Steve Thomas, Dallas, Texas. Norma Wegman, Dallas, Texas. Danny Wegman, Dallas, Texas. Ed Wilson, Dallas, Texas. Alan Ward. Jacksonville, Florida. <laughs> Ann. Alan Ward, Ann. You don't know her name. Her name is Margaret. <laughs> well, Margaret Ward. <laughs> Bob Ridge, Solitude, Indiana. Farrell Ridge, Solitude, Indiana. Solitary. Let's give them a hand clap. J. Ben Killingsworth, Pensacola, Florida. Mike Whidden, Jacksonville, Florida. John Wesley Kane, Jacksonville, Florida. Welton Lane, Louisville, Kentucky. We're home. Brenda McClintock, Springfield, Missouri. Reverend Don McClintock, Springfield, Missouri. Now let's give Brother and Sister McClintock a hand clap as they come and bless us at this time. Praise the Lord. How many is free tonight by the power of the blood of Jesus? Glory to God. He that the Son is set free tonight is free indeed. And we have a reason to bless His holy name. Amen. Hallelujah. Get the band going and let's praise the Lord tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. God's so good. We're glad to be here. Amen. It's free indeed. No more chains or slavery. Truth has triumphed with liberty. He that the Son is set free is free indeed. He that the Son is set free, I know is free indeed. No more chains or slavery. Truth has triumphed with liberty. He that the Son is set standing on that auction block of sin Satan controlled me cause he had the highest bid then ownership was transferred that day in Calvary Jesus whispered child I thought you so that I could set you free he that the son is set free The devil can't make a lock that the Lord doesn't hold the key. He that the sun is set free.
Son has set free is free indeed. Hallelujah. There ain't no refunds. You don't want to take back, hallelujah, and give back what we got. The world didn't give it to us. The devil tried to take it away, but he can't have it. What that we got is the only thing that will stand in the flood, only thing that will stand in the fire, only thing that will stand in persecution is old-fashioned Holy Ghost power that gives you the shield like Jonah, like Job had. He had the shield around about him. Somebody give Jesus a hand clap. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. You can do better than that. Give Jesus a hand clap. Have somebody that don't take no... No personal introductory here of the Paxton Revival Center Church, Reverend Welton Lane. It's been requested for you to sing the song that, that, that God give to you, your testimony, almost persuaded. Won't you tell the folks here that's never heard you sing just a little bit what God has done for you in your life? Somebody give Jesus a praise offering. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, come on, let's give him a holy hand clap. Put those hands together. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Glory to God. Praise God. Almost persuaded. Praise God. One Saturday night in the dark, dim, glim, gloomy nightclub. How many know Jesus know where you at? Talk to me, somebody. I remember I used to sing a song by, uh, I think his name was Charlie Rich, not Bob Rich. Charlie Rich. Nobody knows what goes on behind closed doors. How many know that's a lie? Talk to me. Hey Amen. How many know that's a, a big lie? Jesus knows what goes on behind closed doors, behind open doors, or where you at? He knows what's happening. Of course, somebody shout glory. Praise God. Jesus walked in the nightclub one night. I was singing a song. Come on, baby. A whole lot of shaking going on. And there was a lot of shaking going on that night because I remember the dance floor was jam-packed and they was getting down. Talk to me. They wasn't getting up because, see, the devil don't take you up. He take you down. Talk to me, somebody. Amen. Hallelujah. But that night when Jesus walked in that nightclub, he, 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 he came after me, you know. Hallelujah. I, I had stardust in my eyes. Amen. I, my goal was set. And it wasn't at the middle but it was at the top and I was on my way but I'm gonna know Jesus know how to change your plans or say something somebody Jesus walked in that nightclub asked me a question what you doing in here using the talent that I gave you for the devil oh glory I feel his presence right now but Jesus told me before he left he said when you say yes to me I hear and I answer every prayer that you pray and let me tell you something, believers. My heart say yes. My mind say yes. My body say yes. Everything around me say yes. Hallelujah. Yes to your will, Lord. And that night when Jesus walked in and looked at me, put his right hand upon my right hand, that's when I wrote the words of this little song. The name of it is Almost Persuaded. Last night on my way home from an old nightclub, I met a man with nail scars in both hands. He had a long white robe, a big smile on his face. And I to see through it, amen. Then he sat down beside me. And as he placed his nail-scarred hands in my hand, he whispered in my ear, I love, how I love you, just come on, go home with me, and I was almost 
persuaded to give this old world goodbye. Yes, he sat down beside me And she placed his nail-scarred hands in my hand He whispered in my ear, Wilton, I love Just come on and go home with me. And I was almost persuaded to slip, slip away to the sky. So we heard this world goodbye. Yes, he sat down beside me as she wrapped his loving arms around me. Yes, he did. He whispered in my ear, and Jesus. Just come on and go home with me. And I was almost, why don't you have to say, first way to slip, slip away to the sky. Yeah. Hey!
by your name aren't you glad that Jesus knows your name aren't you glad that Jesus knows where you are aren't you glad that he didn't forget when you was out in darkness out in sin but he went out and got you and brought you back in oh that's the kind of loving God that he is somebody give Jesus another hand clap before you're seated and sister Connie and sister Lane if y'all will come up and bless us with a number make one quick announcement hallelujah all the services are available on videotape. The same thing that you see going on the screens every night is available on videotape. You can pick it up as soon as service is over with, as well as all of it is available on, on, on the audio tape. If you want the whole week, you can stop by and go ahead and pay for it. Get an album to fit the whole 24 hours of preaching, singing and shouting, winter camp meeting 92. Now, don't forget about the service tomorrow morning. It's going to be a great time. Hallelujah. If you love this type of singing, preaching, then you want to be in every one of the services. Winter camp meeting fastly coming to a close. We want to say thanks to all the women that cook so well. Let's hear it, ministers. Tell the women how much you enjoy the cooking. Nobody can cook like our women can. Hallelujah. And so you say, well, how do they know how to cook? They put all their recipes in a cookbook. If you'll stop by the table outside, you can buy a cookbook. Hallelujah. Southern country gospel cooking. <laughs> it's going to be, be great. I ain't going to say you can do it as good as they can, but you can get close to it. Let's give Elaine and Connie all the way from Los Angeles, California, all the way across America a hand clap at this time. It's so wonderful to be here. And the moment I walked in the door, I felt the Spirit of God. You know what? When I got off of the airplane this afternoon, I said, I'm not going to be able to make the service tonight because I just felt sick. And I begin, it can seem like the closer to the service it got, the worse I felt. But I, how many of you know that you can't let the devil rule you? You got to put the devil in his place. And about 20 minutes before they got ready to go, everybody was ready to go. I said, I'm going to church. And I just thank God that, you know, the moment I begin to put forth an effort to get here, I begin to feel better. And I told them coming down the road, I said, I don't know what happened, but I just feel wonderful. And I just thank God for his touch. And I thank God I came expecting something tonight. How many of you came ready to receive something from the Lord tonight? It's my desire to live for Jesus. It's my desire to please him. And it's my desire to do what God wants me to do. It's my desire to live for Jesus. It's my desire to live for Him. No fault of my failures caused Him much shame. It's my My 
failures cause him a shame it's my desire to live for him well if you could see where Jesus brought me from to where I am today then you Today, someone who may have failed to find their way. For I too was once so lost, but I found my way, and it's my desire to live for. Then you would know the reason why I love him so. And you can take this world, its wealth and riches. I don't need earth's powers, it's my desire. It's my We'll be hearing more from them this week. Brother Doyle Hart preaching Thursday night. And you're talking about a preacher. Hallelujah. He knows how to hold the patch, so to speak. He knows how to cut the mustard, as Brother Dobbs says it. Let's give Brother Danny Wagman a hand clap as he comes to greet the folks. Hallelujah. I love Brother Danny Wagman, Sister Norma, all the way from Dallas, Texas. Has a great church in Dallas. God bless you, Brother Steve. It's just been such a delight to be in winter camp meeting. How many has been blessed thus far? Well, I tell you what, tonight you're going to be blessed as Brother Ward brings the Word of God. Then tomorrow night, Brother Tommy counts. And Thursday night, we're leaving out in the morning. But I tell you what, I'll get all these tapes because you'll get more Word this week than some people will get in three years in a seminary. Aren't you glad that the anointing of God is what will destroy the yokes in your life? Amen. Isaiah 65, 24 says that it'll come to pass that before we call, he'll answer. And I believe tonight that God has already answered many of your prayers. Through this convention, there's going to be people, Brother Dobbs, that'll testify of miracles that's resulted in their life because of the deep-seated prayer of faith and because of the anointing of God upon these ministers. And I want to say how much I appreciate Paxson Revival Center and all of the staff that has made this such a success. And let me say something. If you're looking for a church home, you need to get involved in this place, a place of worship, not a meeting place, but a place that are pulling down strongholds that is destroying the work of the devil. I uh, Did you know I believe that we're living in a day that people want to see a real move of God. They want to see an explosion of God's power. They want to see the hand of God manifested in their life. Give the Lord a hand clap if you love him. First Samuel the second chapter the third verse Hannah spoke and said talk no more so exceedingly proudly. Let not arrogancy come out of thy mouth for the Lord is a God of knowledge and by him actions are weighed. I want you to know last night, Brother Rich began to minister in the altars full. Brother Lane, then the, the night before, when Brother Hart began to break the bread of life, conviction filled the congregation as ministers and laymen alike made a new dedication. I believe that our time of talking about the move of God is over with and we're going to experience an outpouring of Pentecost in 1992. Joel prophesied it, Pentecost fulfilled it, but 
Thank God Paxson Revival Center is experiencing it. Give your founders and your pastors a great big hand. I want to say, being the pastor, founder of the church, we got a preaching machine right here. Amen. You may not you come from miles, but we got one we're putting the rain with them. How many believe Brother Steve oh, yes, is a preacher of preachers? Give him a good cap off for it while he comes up. Well, I want to ask Brother Ralph Hart if he'll come up, and this is who I'm trying to imitate, this guy right here. If I could just get a little of what he's got. Let's give him a hand clap as he comes. Thank you, Brother Steve Dobbs. You know, it hadn't been many years ago when you begin to think that we was in the fire hall in York, Pennsylvania. Brother Maurice, Brother Daw, and myself was conducting a revival. One Sunday afternoon, the Spirit of the Lord had moved in the place, and uh, God had spoke to my heart. We had ministered and was receiving an offering. And during this offering, people was coming by, and one by one, I was taken by the hand. And there was a man I just offered him my hand. And what he did, the power of the Holy Ghost touched me. I began to whisper in his ear that God had called him into the ministry. And right behind him, his wife, and a little boy, about like this. He put his offering in my hand. I took him by the hand. And I said, son, God's going to use you to bless his people. You're going to play instruments. You're going to sing, and you're going to preach. This is a little boy. That little boy is on the front row. You heard him play and you heard him sing. Amen. Brother Counts, junior preacher, musician, singer. The song he sang tonight, Miracle, God gave him that song. His father is that man that I took by the hand and prophesied. You never know how God moves in mysterious ways. But I recall this. I says, I want every person here that God has been good to, and God is blessed, and God has put his hand upon yeah. to bring your best to God. And when you do a certain thing, I'm asking God to give me a word for you. Yeah. And I want you to know, when you begin to just sit, and let your mind think. That song that Brother Welton Lane sang. That song has touched multiplied thousands of people. He just closed the revival in our church in Detroit. But I think of the many people that's walked in the doors of this church. You know why this camp meeting is here? Not because Brother Hart's here, Brother Count's here, Brother Lane's here, or Brother anybody else is here. The only reason this place is here is because there was a man 30 years ago that God spoke to. He says, son, build me a church. 30 years ago. And you are the results of it. And that's why we're here tonight. All because brother and sister, Dobbs Sr. stayed where God told him to stay. Jacksonville is known for many things. They've got a football stadium, but it's known for something more precious than that. There's only one like it in the whole world. You know what Jacksonville is known for? For the largest Bible bookstore in the world. It's known for that. You know why? Because Brother Dobbs' son, Steve, God spoke to him have a place for God's people to come and purchase. 
Do you know that God knows who you are? Do you know you'll never know what you mean to God until you recognize this scripture? David was broken. He had nowhere to go. His friends had turned on him. His army had turned on him. Saul is hunting him. His life was in jeopardy. And he fell upon his face before God. In the midst of the darkest hour of his life, he said, this I know. God is for me. When you recognize that, when you know that regardless of every power of hell that comes against you, that God is for you, then you can pick up yourself and begin to march forward. Why? Because God's for you. And tonight, how many of you know that God has did the very best thing that ever could happen in your life? Could I see your hand? Do you know that God has done the best for you? How many has been saved? Could I see your hand? Do you know what it cost? Everything. It cost him his son. He gave his life just for you. Just for you. I'm going to ask tonight that we worship God in an offering. I want you to bring your best. I'm going to tell you, I was handed a note a few moments ago, and God spoke to me this afternoon. And God said, son, when they give their best, they have a need in their life that they can't meet. That need perhaps financial or physical. We have a church that's full of miracles. To the left side of the church, there's hundreds of walking canes, crutches, wheelchairs, white striped sticks, signifying someone used to be blind that used them. All kind of trusses, all kind of apparatuses have people to walk. They've been left there because God gave their best for them. How many want God's best tonight? Go to see your hand. You're in for a treat. My soul was blessed beyond words as I heard Brother Bob Rich last night. When he sings, he's got a voice that just goes into your heart and blesses you beyond words. And when he brought the message, and at the close of the message, how he went to bring his daddy home. And when he got there, his daddy had put a gun blowed his brains out he knows what it is to have sorrow he knows what it is to hold a precious one that he loved not one year about five years sick he weighed on her hand and foot carried her in his arms God took her home but he gave him his best see God don't stop giving you your best as long as you'll give God your best, he'll continue his blessings to flow in your life. And I'm indeed honored to be in the Paxton Revival Center tonight. And I say this without any regret. This is a place that I love to come to. It's a place I love to be. It's a place I love to worship God. Why? Because you know how to hold the name of Jesus Christ high. I'm going to ask tonight everyone here to bring your best. And everyone that gives $20 or more in this offering, I want you to put your offering in my hand. And if you do, I'm asking God to give me a word for you. Let this be the night that God will speak, that God will open up that blind side you've been against, that call that God's give you. This will be the night that God will let it come in. God's been his best to you. Will you do your best for him? Let God speak to you tonight. Heavenly Father, thy humble servant stands before this audience. Dear God, I know that I'm nothing. I know that everything I am is because of you. I know that I stand before you when doctors said there was no hope for me because of you. I know tonight the spirit of God that I feel, that power of the Holy Ghost that I feel permeating this entire audience tonight is from you. And dear God, as we bring our best tonight, I pray the hand of God would anoint your servant. Give me the words. 
for that one that gives their best in Jesus' name. I'm going to ask everyone to stand. I'm going to ask you to come down the center aisle. I want you to bring your very best. If you give as much as $20 or more tonight, put it in my hand. I've got a word from God for you. Heavenly Father, I thank you now in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you don't wait for nobody? You make the first start. Thank God. From a hole, my hand is upon you. Have I not been by your side? Even when you thought that what I told you many years ago would never come to pass, it was I, the Lord God, that had picked you out. It is I, the Lord God, that put my hand upon you. It is I, the Lord God, that burned my message in your life. It is I, the Lord God, that's raged up. And even this night, that shoulder that the devil's come against, I come against him now, and I liberate you in the mighty name of Jesus of Nazareth. Amen. Thank God. Heavenly Father, I decree the mighty hand of God upon this thy servant. Lamb of God, you placed him in a hard place. But you said you'd make the hard places smooth. And yea, I say, my son, have no fear. Look not behind you, but you look forward for the brightest days of your life are there. I have decreed, I'll make a way where there is no way, saith the Lord. Thank God. Heavenly Father, I decree the hand of God upon my sister. Lamb of God, this night I come against the powers of hell. For yea, I send thee, my daughter. Do you not know that my call is upon you? Do you not know that I have put my hand upon you? You're not here by accident. I have brought you here that I might speak this word. For behold, even the bars that's been against you, it looks like the door is steel and can't be opened. But yea, I've given you the key. And my hand is upon you. My blessing is upon you. And the words I put within you, you shall speak my word and my word shall bring prosperity and my word shall bring peace and healing to those uh, saith the Lord thank God but behold my hand is upon you do you not know that it was I, the Lord God, that walked in the hospital when doctors give you no hope? And I put my hand upon you. I have brought you this far. I have brought you this far to let you down. I have brought you this far to carry you forth. And my power and my spirit that I have placed upon thee. And behold, my blessing is there. You can go on and praise me because I've made the way clear. I've removed every stumbling block. I've removed every part uh, and yea this night is a new night uh, and a new day and a new hour is upon you for I am with you saith the Lord thank God oh, oh my hand is upon you my servant yea it is not time to stop uh, it is not time to rest uh, but yea I have given you a message uh, that very few have carried out uh, you have never been ashamed of me uh, and therefore I'm not ashamed of you uh, every battle you face uh, all you got to do is lift your hand uh, I'll fight your battle for you I will take away the enemy uh, I'll put him to one side uh, I'll make your enemies kneel at your feet uh, because I have raised you up uh, and make you and uh, have made you uh, the light of this city and behold my presence and my guidance is with you and you just speak the word and you'll see things happen you never dreamed of saith the Lord oh. behold my hand is upon you my power and my presence is with you do you not know that I the Lord God have moved into your midst and even this hour when the hand of Satan has come against you and it feels like even the heart strings are broken. And you feel many times that the misunderstanding of others have come against you. But yea, I say unto thee, your tears have come up before me. They are bottled up before me. And I have carried your prayers. And I have poured them on the altar. And they become incense of sweet smelling Savior. And behold, my hand is with you. And my power and my strength abides in you, saith the Lord. Thank God. But behold, I have called you. The call that I put upon you wasn't only a call. It's a call to bless my people. And my hand is with you. And yea, I say unto thee, from this night henceforth, 
I shall give thee a desire, I shall give thee a burden, and I shall give thee a ministry to match it. And yea, it matters not what people say. Behold, they shall know that my hand is upon you, and my power is with you. And be not afraid to speak the words that you've been holding back. For this is a new day and a new hour, and I have come upon you. And yea, I put a flood tide upon you, and you shall go forth in my power. Why don't somebody just lift your hands and Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Thank God. For behold, the hours are dark and many times have come around you. And they said you'll never make it. But I say you will make it. And yea, even the powers of hell that's come against this part uh, shall be relieved from your body. And the strength of the Holy Ghost shall be upon you. And you shall be blessed beyond words, saith the Lord. This is the hour when you have come before me. You've come with supplication. And you've come with sincerity and you've come with desires. Behold, have I not said when your ways please me, I shall grant the desires of your heart. This I know and this I have received from you. Therefore you begin to praise me for your desires shall be met, saith the Lord. Thank God. Go ahead and praise me. Hallelujah. Behold, I, the Lord God, in the midst of my people, have I not moved in my presence as the musicians sang, as they played, as they give me praise. It was I that touched you and caused the joy of the Lord begin to rise because you've been dismayed and you've been in a place where the powers of hell have come against you and caused the darkness of night to fall upon you. But from this day the sun shall shine and the glory shall assemble, saith the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. of the hour of trouble I'll be by your side yea when they held the hands of my servant and the son did not say that I had come against him I fought the enemy and I give him the victory and I will fight your battle and the victory is yours you can shout about it saith the Lord yes Lord Behold, the hour is now upon you, and you long for a time to find perfect peace, and the perfect peace shall rest upon you, and the night when you haven't been able to sleep, and you walk the floor because of trouble, and because of heartaches, those heartaches shall pass, and the trouble shall be taken care of. I shall make a new day and new hour, saith the Lord. sister because dear God she looks like a perfect specimen looks like happiness all around her and really her heart is heavy her mind is perplexed because Satan has come against her Satan I decree your hand be lifted down for I am the Lord God I will fight your battle for you put your faith and trust anew in me turn not to the right turn not to the left and the whole victory is yours this night saith the Lord hand of God and the power of the Holy Ghost be upon you. Let this be the time when you will begin to rejoice because victory is yours, saith the Lord. Listen, I want everyone here, I don't care whether you can give $20 or $1 or $100. Doesn't matter. I want you to come. I want to touch every person in this audience tonight. And I don't want you to wait till I get through and come running up here. I want you to get in that line right now. I don't mean tomorrow. I mean right now. I mean right now. I mean right this instant. Amen. Thank God. I'm the hold the hand of God upon you. Satan. Such a 
is with you in the greatest power of your tests and your trials. I've been by your side. That is nothing. I have given you strength. I have given you life. And my blessings are for you. All because you've dedicated your life to me. Therefore your days shall be lengthened. And your health shall continue. By the Lord God is with you now, saith the Lord.
between the gift and the giver. We decree thy blessing. And these that give thee an empty hand, they know you, dear God. And you put something, you bless every person that I have touched this night. I decree a financial outpouring, a flood time in their life in Jesus' mighty name. You brought us a mighty long way. You held us up in the time of the storm. You overshadowed us in the time of the heat. Lord, we thank you that you've been a cloud. You've been a fire. You've been the stream. Lord, we thank you that you've been that solid rock that we stood on. Not only the rock that we stood on, but the rock that we hid in. For we can hide ourselves in the cliff of the rock. Lord, we thank you for what you have done already in winter camp meeting. And Lord, as the man of God comes to minister the word of faith and the word of God, let the word be planted in our heart. For the word can will not do us any good in our mind but God let it get in our heart let that seed begin to grow and begin to multiply for faith coming by the hearing of God's word Lord tonight in this service in Jesus name we pray amen and amen I thank you Jesus if you thank the Lord give him a hand clap oh hallelujah 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 thank you Jesus let's give brother Alan Ward a hand clap Stay with me, Welton. Stay with me, Welton. Hallelujah. Well, it's glory, glory, glory. Somebody touch me. Glory, glory, glory. Somebody touch me.
real microphone. Who said that? You said that. God just spoke to Eddie Wilson to buy me a good microphone like this. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Talk. Praise the Lord. Star Wars, Star Wars, Star Wars. Praise the Lord. He made me an offer that I could not refuse. He said that if I turn heaven down, it's hell that I choose. Said that I could live forever. Ain't that good news? Well, he made me an offer that I could not refuse. He said if I was lonely, that he would be my friend. He said that if I trusted him, my life would never end. He said that from chains of sin, he would cut me loose. Well, he made me an offer that I could not refuse. He made me an offer that I Since the day he saved me, I ain't never been the same. He brought peace and understanding to a life that was true. Well, he made me an author that I could not refuse. He made me an author that I could not refuse. He said if I turn heaven down, it's the hell that I choose. He said that I could live forever. sensible thing. You play the piano and I will play the guitar. And for uh, I guess 25 plus years being faithful to that, God blessed me with a guitar. It doesn't look like a guitar but there is a guitar in this thing. Matter of fact, there's about 400 things in there. And uh, But I was at Danny Wegman's church. Yeah, there's a bass guitar in there too. This thing, you can take it and put this in, make it one thing, put the middle, make it a sound, do this. And uh, I was uh, in a church. My wife plays bass guitar. I told my wife, no, I, I told somebody else, that's who it was. I said, boy, this thing is so smart. I said, I said with one button, I said, I can uh, replace that bass guitar was one one button. I did not know my wife was ten mile around anywhere. She walked up behind me, huh? I said I can replace my wife with one button. That's what I said. Now you folk knew, y'all know that I was talking about that bass guitar. But I said I said with one button I can replace my wife. Something pecked me on the shoulder. I turned around. 
And she said, why don't you see if that thing's got a washer and dryer button on it? <laughs> yes, she did. Yes, she did. Yeah. I, I'm going to sit back and play this thing. I was at Daniel Wagner's church listening to him play the guitar, and, and, and he does it better than this. This guy ever played it. But I'm just going to sit back and do it. If it don't do it right, I'll start all over. Amen. The greatest thing to be is a born-again Christian. Next to that, the greatest place to be is in Jacksonville, Florida, at Camp Meeting. Somebody say amen. I go to many, many camp meetings, many conventions, many revivals. Been doing it since May of 1981, full-time in the ministry. The people that are, are in fellowship with the Dobbs have the best camp meetings in the entire United States. I'm qualified, I'm qualified to tell you that. I'm, I'm, I'm qualified to tell you that, I know. And I know that there are some other good ones out there, but uh, they're good. But, but why settle for good when you can get the best? Amen. Hallelujah. I want to know if Fix It is here. If she is, I can preach. There it is. That's all I need. John chapter number 2, you know the verse, you don't even have to turn. John chapter 2, verse number 19, is I want to read a scripture. I like to read, even though we know it by heart, we still like to fasten our eyes upon the written word. Jesus answered and said unto them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I... We'll raise it up. 1 Corinthians 3, 16 and 17. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. Jesus said, destroy this body, destroy this temple. They said, Master, it takes. 46 years to build the temple and you say that you're going to raise it back up in three days. Jesus said, I speak not of the structure. He said, I speak of my body. He said, but you can take your best shot. You can destroy this outside, but he said, in three days, I will raise it up. Now, I'm simply talking about the one tonight that you have been praising. I'm simply talking 
tonight about the one that you call Lord. I'm simply talking about the one tonight that all power has been given in his hand. I'm talking one tonight that you call him Jesus. He said, destroy this body, but in three days, I'm going to raise it back up. He said, take your best shot. He said, but when you've done your worst, he said, the best is going to happen. We've seen the church world as such. We've seen a remnant of the church. It looked like that there has been a great amount of defeat. But Brother Rich, there's one thing that will never go under. There is one institution that will never go out of business. Our universities and our colleges, whatever, building businesses, whatever, might go under. But there is one institution that will never go under. There is one body that will never. Jesus Christ said, take what you want to, your best shot. But he said, I'm going to build me something that man cannot tear down. I'm going to build something that greater is he that's within it than he that's within the world. Hallelujah. Destroy whatever you want to on the outside. But he says, I'm going to raise it up. Now I want you to know tonight, there is something on the inside of me that is raised. There's something on the inside of me that's not asleep. There's something on the inside of me tonight that cries out to Jesus. And somebody shout amen with me tonight. Hallelujah. I, I think of a, a, of a, a statement. The worst has happened, but the best is yet to come. That which seems like that all the answers are absolutely no and just stand still. That which seems like that there is no way out. It seems like that Satan has put binders and blinders and everything on us but I still believe that God's got some preachers I still believe that God's got some teachers that have anchored in the rock that he said I'm going to build this church upon I still believe that there are those that still pay the tithes I still believe that there are those that will line up and let the man of God pray that anointing prayer upon them oh you know what I'm talking about tonight you know what I speak about tonight his name is Jesus Amen. A lot of things in family, a lot of things in individual life. It seems like it's just been total disaster. Let's call that the worst. Now, brother, you're not going to look at me like you got all during time I'm preaching on you. All right. The worst seems like that has happened. The outside may look like it may have crumbled, look like it may have fallen down. But how many know that we are Abraham's seed? <laughs> how many know that it don't take a whole lot of room for a seed to begin? Amen. Hallelujah. They, they, they took Jesus. They destroyed that outside. They beat him beyond recognition. But that was just only the beginning of what you shouting about tonight. I said that's the only the beginning of what you shouting about tonight. Amen. The worst may have come to your marriage. You might say it can't get any worse. Uh, you say, I'm ready to throw the towel in. Uh, but I want you to know, hon. Uh, I want you to know, sir. I want you to know, ma'am. Uh, don't reach for the towel. Uh, reach for it is written. Uh, begin to use God's sword upon that situation. Uh, because you've already been endued with power to not let that thing get you down, uh, but for you to put your feet on top of it. To, and begin to say thus saith the word of God and walk through this thing don't let it get you down but walk on past it 
the situation that you're in tonight. Pastor, is a place that your church may be in. The way that you get out of that situation is do something by faith. You will stay and you will magnify and you will build upon the situation and the problem that exists. But that faith will not recognize that trouble spot. I said faith in God will not recognize. Faith is of God. And in your situation that you find God's word for, God can only be God in your situation. God's not a quitter. God's got your answer. My God, somebody pray. Him tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That which appear to be worst that's happened to you. Man, it's resurrection time. The church, Brother Bailey, the church, it seemed like we've been splattered and slandered all across. But there is a remnant a church in that church that there's a wheel inside that wheel amen brother there's something that's about to make a, a great exit out of here but I want you to know before we exit out of here we're going to make a noise the world is going to know who we are we're not going to go out of here defeated we're not going to go out of here mad we're not going to go out of here troubled I believe that I serve a God we're not appointed to the wrath but we're to obtain salvation I believe the church is about to rise with healing in its wings. I believe the vision that you've seen. I believe that God's going to bring it to pass. Can somebody say amen? Amen. amen. The worst, the worst, mama, may have happened. But the best is coming your way. You realize that the situation that you're in right now, it's the opportunity that God's given you to do something by faith. I talked to a preacher in Corpus Christi a few weeks ago for 17 years. He served on the board for a name organization. But for 17 years, he ran from God. He came back to God and God gave him a miracle. And this is his miracle he gave him. He said, son, he said, for 17 years, there has been problems, there has been trouble, there have been things come your way. And he says, I put them there. I allow them to be there for you to show yourself faithful. And he said, then I will show myself faithful. Come on, somebody. Those things are there. And we can begin to give God glory. We can begin to give him praise. If we'll just come through the situation that it seems like that has, we are in. If we'll just do something by faith and get out of there. And you're not going to get out of there unless you do something by faith. You're not. How do you get out of there? Do you realize that the area that you're troubled in is the area that your breakthrough will come? You hear what I'm saying? The area that is pricking you, the area that is giving you problems, that is an exit sign. <laughs> That's the door that God wants you to walk through. My God, count it all joy when you fall into divers temptation because it's the power of God that wants to go to work in you. Hallelujah. Amen. That's why that, that's why that these men of faith, that's why that these patriarchs, that's why that these that you see that has held up the bloodstained better for, for a, a total century. That's why you see them still saying that God's the same yesterday, today, and forever. If God did it then, God's going to do it again. And I'm about to enter into an arena that God's about to open up his glory curtain. I said God's about to open up those prayer 
prayers are about to be answered. They're not bottled up somewhere in heaven. God is ready and those angels are on command, on assignment to deliver to you. The answer, what is it? Genesis 6 and 12, I think. God promised Abraham, Abram then, God promised him, I'm going to give you, I'm going to give your seed this land that's over there at the going down of the sun. He said, I'm going to give it to your seed. The fourth generation, Joshua comes along. I'm going to give it to you. But I, I want to just point out one thing that God did there while they were possessing the land. God told Abram, he says, I'm going to give you the land. That was a promise from God. Now, is there anything that God's promised to you that you aren't walked in, you haven't walked in yet? You're not possessing it. Amen. Amen. Some, some, of, some of us get, 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 get paranoid. Some of us get stationary. Bless God, I'm saved. And, and, and this, is, this, is, this is my pew. And, and, and don't, don't you sit in it. My, I've had them run me out of their pew. How many know that to be true? I have. I've, I've come in and seen them. And, and, and I, I noticed the place was kind of dipped out there a little bit. But, uh, and, and, but they, they, they sat there so long, they just kind of do like a little chicken, you know. And sit right down there. And, and they've got it marked by the inch and by the ounce. And God ain't about to move them out of that. And ain't no preacher about to move them. But whatever it takes for the church to have revival, whatever it takes to have a move of God, this evangelist is for it. I want to see God be God. We serve a big God. Jesus said destroy this body, but he says I'll raise it up. We serve a supernatural God. He's just not a figment of our imagination, but God is God. He is real. The most real thing in the universe is God. Amen. Woo. Somebody say woo. woo. Whatever the worst situation that has come to you, you realize that it's opportunity knocking at your door for you to climb out that escape hatch called faith. A way where there seemeth no way. They put Jesus in that tomb and sealed that tomb and put up a do not disturb sign on it. That ring in Sigma, don't bother it. How many has ever seemed like you've been and the daylight has been closed off from you? Got one. How I many seem like you, you've been in total darkness to the light of what you should do? And the stone was rolled up there. And they thought they had him confined in the confinement. But there was a door that they had not counted on, Brother Dobbs. I said, there was a door that the world doesn't know anything about. There is an escape for us. He has made an escape for us. And Jesus said, I am the door. He doesn't need a physical place to walk through. He can walk through the stone. He can walk through the wall. He can walk through the wall of your heart. He can walk through your problem. I'm talking about a God. I'm talking about a supernatural being. I'm talking about the one that hangs the stars and says, let there be light. Let there be darkness. Dividing the water. I'm talking about the one that you call Jesus. 
And if we're going to have, count me, we're going to have to get out of those circumstances that we call bad and worse. If you'll begin, if you'll begin, begin to praise him in those situations, you'll dance your way out of them. Amen. You may be a little bit slow in starting it. Amen. But I guarantee you, God will bring the increase. The worst may have come, but the best is coming. I said the best is coming. I am believing God. I said I am believing God to see my church when I, I don't call it my church, but our church, if I ever pastor, I want to see walking canes piled up instead of piled up under somebody's arm. It's not God's perfect will. It's His perfect will that we be in good health. We've got a better testimony. I said we've got a best, better testimony when we let God be God in our sickness. We've got a better testimony. I, I, I'm praying God move us into an atmosphere as Peter when he walked out on the face of the water. God move us into an atmosphere. Not a of failing them, not of seeking them, but God walking out and doing the supernatural that which you can only do through us. They told us, told Peter to stay in the boat. My God. I'm asking God, whatever it takes, put me out there on the water. I am because there I will totally depend upon him. If, if it be the will of God, I'm asking God that when you ride in the wheelchair in revival meeting, that you'll push that dude over in the corner and put it in park. You hear what I'm saying? I'm believing God to open up the blind eyes. I'm believing God to open up the spiritual blindness uh, and see that he is God. Uh, and if God can raise um, himself, the son of God, from the dead, uh, you ain't got no problems. All you need is faith in God. Uh, I don't have any problems. Uh, what I need is faith in God. And faith will remove me from it. Somebody say amen. I believe God is a total deliverer. Amen. The worst has happened. I can say that in this meeting. I meant the worst preacher getting to preach tonight. The best is yet to come. You ought to shout. You ought to shout. I, I haven't been trained how to have unbelief. I haven't been trained. I, I, I signed up with Egypt. But Deuteronomy 6 and 23 says he brought us out that he might bring us in. There's more to this Christian walk than onions and garlic. There's milk and honey flowing. There's honey still in the rock. Maurice sings a song. Swing up, oh well. God's going to make a river. God's going to make a water well. He's going to not pay it, but God's going to perform his word. God's going to speak to it. If we'll just dare to have faith in God and let God be God of our situation. Amen. Scripture says he brought us out that he might bring us in to a land flowing with milk and honey. Amen. Get the onions spiritually and the garlic off your breath. That ain't nothing but repeated problems and troubles. You know why I don't have a lot of problems? I don't. 
I do not. I do not. I leave all my problems with pastors. I do. I think the pastor, I think the shepherd has many, many, many times more of compassion than the evangelist. But God gave us a five-fold ministry. We need somebody to skin some, dehorn some, and, and then when, when, when he's gone. Now, I know this won't book no meeting for none of you pastors. But we need, we, we need to return back when the preacher gets behind the pulpit and squares his shoulders and begin to preach hell hot and heaven beautiful. We need some preachers. We need somebody to say, thus saith God, not what the Democrats say. If the Democrats keep going the way they're going, they're all going to hell. God's not only going to turn you over to a reprobate mind, he'll turn you over to the Democrats first. I'm a child of God. I'm not a political party. I belong to the body of Christ. I'm not of some dead religion. What's on inside of me, it's like fire, and it's shut up in my bones, and I'm going to find a place to speak, thus saith God, and then God's going to bring his word to pass. Amen. Hallelujah. You can take your best shot. At the true church of the living God. Whatever you want to shoot and throw at him. Mama, if you hold my coat just about, I mean my mic about that long. I'm going to get rid of it now. I, I'm going to, I got my steam built up now, fix it. Lord God, I like to sweat. Preacher ought not even get paid unless he sweats. Hear what I'm saying. Hallelujah. What was I fixing to say before before I had to fix it? Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. No, it does matter too. I ain't gonna preach like you. <laughs> I mean, because you can just think of anything and be a blessing out of it. Yeah. Oh, Democrats. Yeah. Now, now I'm not, I'm not going to get off. I didn't say anything about the Republicans. <laughs> but repeating a statement that I heard Brother Arthur say on his broadcast, when I... To be president cares more about a spotted owl than he does an unborn baby. When he tries hard with, to be legislation to put queers and homos, there are queers in Arkansas and out here and, and somewhere else are home. In Arkansas and San Francisco, they're queers. They're queer. But when, when, he, when, when he tries through legislation to put that into our military that he fought hard to stay out of. My Bible tells me that righteousness exalts a nation, uh, but sin is a reproach. Uh, my eyes are not fixed on the Democrats. Uh, my hope is not in some party. Uh, my God, we're having a party here tonight. Uh, oh, but of God, uh, we're about to have a party that this earth knows nothing about. Uh, when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. Uh, when we all see Jesus, we're going to sing and shout the victory. Hallelujah. Pastor Dobbs, 
I'm not going to wait till I get to heaven to shout. I said, I'm not going to wait till I get to heaven to shout. I've got shout in me tonight. I've got a dance in me tonight. Somebody shout amen. Hallelujah. But if we'll, if we'll have, if we'll return back to thus saith God. If we'll get some preachers that be more concerned about a soul dying and going to hell than a paycheck. I said if we'll get a preacher that's more concerned about the hot flames of hell. God, God have mercy upon us. I admire what Pastor Steve said. He said, I will not have a singing group in my church unless they give invitation to the lost. You better not do that one. That was loaded too. But it looked like we may have been knocked down. Somebody preach a little bit right there. I'm going to get me a drink of water. Somebody say, mm. If you can't say, mm, why can't you? It might look like the church may have took a serious blow. But how many remember the great Cassius Clay, Muhammad Ali? How many know what I'm talking about? Many times he could, he could take a punch. And he'd stand and do a little bit of rabbit. And then he would come back and he would bring the final knockout blow. The church, it seemed like we may have taken a hit here and a hit in that state and another punch over here and something else over here. It seemed like our pulpits have been affected. It seemed like our choirs have been affected. It seemed like our musicians have been affected. But Brother Dole Hart, the church is about ready to let God strike the final blow. I said the church is about ready. We've had enough. I said we've had enough. Enough is enough. I said enough is enough. Church, we've got to stand up and be the church of the living God. If the church will stand up and be the church, God will do what he's going to do. Amen. Amen. We may, I'm going to quit here in a little while. Y'all quit saying amen. I promise I quit. But we may have been knocked down. Mm. Brother, Brother Bailey, just I lay down here, jump up and say, Get up! Come on, preacher! moment ago. He said, God, this is better than any honky tonk. Anything. Oh, 
All the music, all of the music belongs to God. It's been stolen. It's been hung up on the willow tree. But we're going to take it down. The violent, if we have to get violent, we're going to do it. Amen. We are anchored in something. This old ship might be tossed, tormented, tossed. But that anchor is anchored. And we will not go under. We will go over. And the worst may have happened. And many of you could paint a picture tonight. But can you paint a picture in your faith of what God's about to do? And if you cannot, you will no doubt stay right where you are. You know why your church is dead? You're dead. You know why your choir is dead? Because their leader is dead. And this one's not. You know why the boards are dead? Because they automatically are the will of God. Amen. Now I'm going to close again. I done missed two good places to close out now. And I say this and I, I, want, I want you, this is not even, I didn't sleep a bit last night. Didn't sleep at all last night. Maybe 15 minutes. God, I was so high in the spirit after that meeting last night. And then God gave me a message just on the word. I said, God, that'll fit these preachers just good. It, it, it would encourage them, the greatness of God and who the word is. And I said, another there tonight. This is what's changed, don't we? Uh, whatever situation that you're in, give God the opportunity let your, let your situation be like you're from Arkansas. The land of opportunity. You've got an opportunity to leave it. Or you can stay there in it. The worst may have happened. And you could paint a long picture of that. And when you talk to people, you could paint a long picture of it. Then we make our victory, our praise report so small. Everything's all right now since I've said yes to Jesus. Brother Ralph, I'm going to see a move of God. Brother Counts, I'm going to see a move of God. And I believe here are some teams of people that when we unite ourselves together, here's some more right here. When we unite ourselves together, God's going to do it. God's going to do it. Amen. God. Did I leave out anything? <laughs> fix it? Did I fix it? I just want to make sure. Anybody else know of anything to preach right now? If you do, well, God's calling you to preach, so preach. Amen. Well, let's bow our hearts. God, you've given these people an anointing tonight to receive. God, I felt this anointing all over this building. Holy Spirit, I'm asking you, God, for these people to become believers of what this preacher has preached. God, let these people know that you can only be God in their situations. And Jesus, as you prayed in the garden, not my will. Lord, let this pass from me. But he said, 
nevertheless. Let me inject this in that word. How many times do we settle for the lesser of the two wills, our will and God's will? Never, never the less. I felt the anointing on Brother Ralph tonight asking you when you give to God, never the less but thy will. God bring conviction upon us. God, that we are not all what you want us to be. Yes, Lord, we're saved. But what must we do that we might work the works of God? And then, Lord, the great answer that you gave, you just said to believe. Now, God, am I a believer? If I am a believer, I will be a receiver. Thank you again, God, for these that are anointed to receive your word. Everybody, would you stand with me tonight? That which you faced, you can take this message tonight. Take the word of faith. Now it's nigh thee, even in thy mouth. To begin to operate in a different arena than of unbelief and doubt. Ever how, ever how you got in that situation and are staying there, just act opposite of that. Hallelujah. Well, there's a song that says, Where he leads me, I'll follow. Give me the key. Where he, where he leads me, I will follow. And the voice of the church sings, where he leads me, I will follow. Where he About about 40 or 50 people. Let's start with that. And that you will, let's do this quick. You're going to say, God, I'm going to walk away from this situation, this trouble. And I'm going away from it. And when I return back, it's not going to be here. And that's going to be your blessing tonight out of this message something by faith. I want you to follow what I've spoken tonight. And if you really mean serious business with God, I want to just have a, a prayer and follow Him all the way. If you mean business, I want you to gather here quickly. Where He leads me, I will follow. I will follow where he leads me I will follow I'll go with him with him all the way one more time and then we'll pray where he leads me everybody I
somebody say, Brother Ward, why don't you do like somebody else in your altar service? I'm going to tell you exactly what the Spirit is just prompting me. I don't want to use the Spirit. I want the Spirit to use me. And God has caused me to be wise enough not to fall for methods and for tricks to get a treat. Then when the real rhema of God speaks to me, I will not have to unload all this other. I will be able to receive that time of refreshing and then God will minister. Thank God for those that are already moving in the miraculous. Hallelujah. Sing it one more time. Everybody stretch your hands this way. Where he leads, Father, by your power and your anointing. That's upon Bless this man in the name of Jesus. Spirit of truth. Spirit of the Most High God. God be God in this situation. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Sing it with me. Where he leads me, I will follow. Where he leads me, I will follow. Hallelujah. He leads It'll be some glad morning when this life is over. I'm gonna fly away. I'll be going to a land where joy will never end. 